Hey guys, welcome to today's video. I'm gonna be doing my very first house plant tour and this is probably gonna be a longer video because I wanna take you around the plant room, show you all the plants that I have in here and also share some tips along the way with like any mistakes I've made with certain plants or what certain leaf damage was caused by and just kind of really take you through and share some tips, uh, some growing tips along the way. Oh, and thank you so much for your patience too. I had a really busy month last month. Last month was when the gym shows were going on and I was trying to get caught up on work at the same time. It Things were crazy. So I had to just focus on that, get caught up on my work and website and then get back to making videos. So thank you so so much for your patience and it's so good to be back i was really missing making videos that whole time okay i think what we'll do is start at the doorway and then i'll work my way around the room and i'll i'll pull back also and try to share like what the space looks like what sort of each area looks like because i think it's helpful to see what sort of lighting the plants are getting um, what like the little individual microclimate is around the room. So I figured that would be a little bit more helpful than just like racing through and telling you all just the names of the plants that I have in here. So I kind of want to add some, some care and some growing tips in here along the way too. All right, so we'll start at the doorway so you can see what it looks like when you first walk in the room and work our way around. Okay, so I'm right at the doorway right now and this is what it looks like when you first walk in the room. So I have the Ikea Vitzjo shelves, uh, the, the double, ones, uh, one on this wall here to the right and one to the left here on this wall. And then I have the singles going across that way. I have three single Vitzjo shelves. And at the very top here, I have the, the long shelf up there. It's just a board that I painted white and it's like a, a 12 foot board. So it's a pretty long one, stretches across the whole length of the room. It's a fairly small room but it works for the plants and this room gets the best lighting in our entire house. So we have one southeast facing window and then one southwest facing window. So it gets light from morning till sunset. Um, but one of the things about this room is it does get hot because it does have access to the sun all day. So I do have to kind of play around with protecting the plants in here so they don't get sunburn. Although you will see some sunburn plants because I have um, put them in wrong places sometimes and didn't realize they were getting like hot afternoon sun through the blinds. And one thing I try to keep in mind when I'm styling or organizing plants is the microclimate of the space I'm putting them in. So not just the lighting, but also the heat and temperature. So for example, our south facing wall, this is an exterior wall between the two windows. And so that gets sun on it all day long and it really can get cooking. It really can radiate heat and you can feel that heat if you put your hand up against that wall. And then at the opposite side of that is our north facing interior wall. And so since the sun is not beating on this wall, it's the coolest side of the room. And so this is where I ended up putting my plants that like it a little bit cooler. And although the whole room, you know, during summertime will heat up to about 85 degrees, at least this side does not have the heat radiating and cooking from that wall right behind them. So it does stay a little bit cooler and it does definitely make a difference with the plants. So this is the wall that I actually have all my queens on. So if I pull back here, you'll be able to see the little collection of queens I have there. I love these plants so much. Anthuriums, um, as I move around the room, you'll see are one of my favorite genus. And the Vitzjo shelves, when we were setting these up, I decided to modify them. So normally they come with a solid top and I just decided to leave those off. And so the frame is completely open on top. So that way the light isn't obstructed and it can just pour straight through to the plants on all the shelves. Also, even though this is the brightest room in our house, I do still have to use grow lights in here to supplement because there's certain parts of this room like this side, this corner, and then back over here in this little shelving area. Uh, that side of the room is pretty dark if I don't turn on the grow lights, so I do have to use them. So all of the LED lights that I use are natural daylight, so they're just a natural white. I don't use any color lights or tinted lights, um, and I don't use ones that are too cool tone, because uh, I just find that I just prefer the creamier, more natural daylight white. Like this one up here, I really like these lights a lot. Actually, I tested these out. I bought one at first on Amazon, tested it out with my queens, 
turns out that they seem to love it and so I bought three others and I like them also because they're really easy to set up they're flexible um, they're very lightweight and also they don't get hot so they don't put out you know much heat they're very low energy but they're very efficient also these lights do come with a timer and there's three different settings for that so I have mine set on 12 hours so it automatically comes on in the morning and shuts off in the evening. I originally picked these out because they were all white, like completely white, even the clip and the gooseneck and the cord and everything on them was all white. So that's why I chose those to begin with because I knew that they would just blend right in with my wall and furniture and I wouldn't have like black cords to have to deal with and try to hide. So it fits, it fits my, my setup pretty well. One thing to consider with these lights though is the cords are pretty short. They're only like four foot long. So just something to keep in mind. So this wall and this shelf gets the least amount of light and also it's the coolest. So you can kind of get an idea by who I have over here. You know, I have the Queen Warwick Wianum collection over here and also the Philodendron Luxuriance, which is the only odd plant out hiding down here. It took me a while to figure out a place for this because it was getting too much light everywhere else that I tried to put it. If I can just pull back here and show you the size of this leaf. It is huge. <laughs> I was not expecting it to put out that big leaf, but apparently it's very happy getting the lowest light that I can give it. Um, I mean, it still needs light, but you know what I mean? Like it really likes lower light. And these Philodendron Luxurians are so gorgeous. I love their deep velvety green leaves and the veining is really cool on them too. I mean, they're just beautiful plants. One thing to know about these though, if you've never grown one before is they are crawlers. So rather than being a climber, it will crawl along the surface of the soil. So that's why it has the stolen in there kind of uh, growing however it feels like it's trying to crawl out of the pot hopefully after adjusting the position of the pot it will straighten itself out though um, and come forward rather than going off to the side there otherwise i'll have to train it back in if it tries to get out, <laughs> if it tries to get out because there's still plenty of room in the pot so uh, anyway that's one thing that you get to deal with when you're growing the crawling philodendrons but i do love this plant would highly recommend and if you guys want a video on it, like with more details on how to grow any of these plants I show you, just let me know. I'm happy to do that. Um, this one, definitely, it does not want to dry out. A lot of the crawler philodendrons, they don't like to go dry. It can make them prone to spider mites if they're kept too dry and too warm. So they do like to be a little bit um, on the intermediate cooler side. I mean, they like warm temperatures, but they, don't, they just don't like hot weather. So just something to keep in mind with these babies, but they are gorgeous. So I've got it in the self-watering pot. It's in a chunky mix and I always make sure that I do not let that go dry because otherwise it will brown the tips on it really quick. But if you keep them well watered, they will give you beautiful leaves without any brown edges. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention about the Philodendron Luxurians and the lighting. If it's grown in too intense of light, like if the light intensity is a bit too strong for it, the petioles, the leaf petioles will tilt downwards. So they will try to get away from the light and you'll notice that. So instead of facing upwards, you know, like this, this big leaf here, instead of facing nice and pretty and upwards, they will end up kind of curving down and trying to get away from the light. So if you see that going on, then you'll know that the light intensity is a bit too strong for it. Most of my Queen Warwick Wianums came from Equigenera and also Equiflora. I placed one order with Equiflora for three of the queens um, like last year sometime. And so I think that was uh, this one here, which is putting out a brand new leaf here. It's so cute. I love baby Warwick Wianum leaves. They're so cute. Oh, wait till you see these little baby baby ones over here that I grew from chunks. They're adorable. Oh, and this one was the other one. That one was like super like struggling. It was like a little bitty thing uh, when I bought it and it it went through a whole time. I had to completely reroute it. Um, the chunk rotted when it came in and everything. So most of my plants are imported. I should mention that also. Um, this one isn't though. I did order this um, on Etsy from Red Leaf Exotics and that one is doing really well. That one I might have to repot though. Oh, you know what? That's, oh, that's time, it's time to water that one. Um, I also top off all my all my anthuriums with moss too. So it kind of helps those roots because they're always putting out new roots as it grows. But see, I got to add more because we got naked roots 
popping out there. And queen and therium are highly variable, so you can get a lot of variety. You know, you can have some that are extra, extra dark, and then you have some that are more narrow than others, some that are more green. Um, now, most of the ones that I have are supposed to be the dark narrow, um, but I do have like this one here that I got from Red Leaf Exotics. That one's a cross between a dark narrow and a green form. I should grab my measuring tape and see what we're at here, but it's about two feet long now, this, this newest leaf here. Um, so it's, it's really fun watching the leaves come out. It's like one of the most exciting things to see an anthurium leaf because they come out so tiny, but then when they keep expanding, you just never know how big they're gonna end up being. But yeah, these are so much fun to grow. The queens are definitely one of my favorite plants. It, it's really what got me hooked on growing anthurium. Okay, so I don't wanna get stuck too much on the queen anthurium, but this is my queen anthurium wall here or shelf. And uh, they, they do seem to like it a little bit cooler so that's why I have them on this side of the room. So they really like it more in the 70 degree range, but once it starts hitting like, you know, mid 80s or higher, they don't like that so much. So they're a little bit sensitive to the heat. So they're more like an intermediate warm. They don't want to be in cold temperatures, but they just, they don't want to be in hot either. They're, they like that sweet spot. One of the things that I definitely noticed is they are also sensitive to too bright of light. They, they like medium light, but if it gets too bright or too hot, they definitely start kind of like getting uncomfortable and they let you know it. This is also a very nice large leaf here, um, but I had it up on my shelf, my top shelf on the other side of the room. It was too close to a window and it did get this kind of warping in the leaf. Um, this is one of the older leaves here. You can see the yellow spotting along the perimeter. So you can see that, uh, that was me over watering it. Oops, I, I was still trying to like kind of, you know, figure it out. I still mess up with my, my anthurium from time to time. Uh, you'll, you'll see some other mistakes that I've made along the way. But yeah, that one was from overwatering. So yeah, yellow spotting is not necessarily fungus or something that you need to be afraid of uh, it continuing to spread or jumping to other plants or something. A lot of the time it's just damage to the leaf or the leaf margin. If the leaf margin gets damaged, um, it can spread inwards a little bit, but it's not like it's fungal, like it's gonna jump around all over your collection or something. So I showed you what overwatering looks like and then underwatering, it will usually be the tips. So I'll show you over here on this one. So that's an example of underwatering damage there. And that can spread a little bit too, but normally that will stop also um, once the watering uh, resumes back to normal. Oh, like here's another example too, like this one, that was underwatering. But yeah, the variation of the queens is really gorgeous. I mean, look how dark this one is. It's just amazing though, all the different shades that you get in the variations, you know, the sinuses are different too. Like some have quite pronounced lobes and you know, they're, they're just really, really interesting to see all the, all the variations of the leaves. And then on the floor down here is a pot of micans. I think I might've put too many in here. I wanted a nice full pot of micans and it, it's turning out to be fuller than I even thought. <laughs> it's very, it's very tightly packed all the way around that pot. And I have it on a five foot uh, coconut husk totem here. I have another pot of micans over on this side of the room. Let me turn this way without making you guys too dizzy. Here, if I come over this way, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. But yeah, that one is really going beautifully. Oh, it's pretty much reached the top now. Yes, it is exactly even with the top. It's been so fun to watch these micans climb though. They're just so gorgeous. Oh my gosh, it's one of my favorite plants. I mean, aren't they just delicious? I, I just love them. And then when they do start to get some of the bronzy color, I might end up having to move this one though because it's getting taller and it's getting too close to the light now. So I might have to move that pot. Um, where it's not going to be so bright at the very top because I don't want it to get too sunburned up there. I think my favorite way to grow micans is climbing, but I, I like how they look trailing too. I mean, I just love them any way. Any way I can get them, I love them. Uh, they're so pretty. So this room also doubles as not only my plant room, but also my photo studio for my crystals and minerals. So I've, I've got my website linked in the description box below. That's what I've been working on in case you guys were curious or if you're just coming into my channel and you're seeing it for the first time. Um, I have a crystals and minerals business that I've had since 2005. 
Um, I run it with Michael. We love crystals and minerals. It's, it's like my passion, my life passion. Like since I was a little kid, I've always been into gemstones and I'm just so fascinated with the treasures of the earth that I just want to share them with everyone. I think they're just amazing. I love learning about them the same way that I get excited about plants. Okay, so coming back over to the side of the room, this is another zone, my work area back here. So I have plants that are sort of back here, you know, in their hospital, I would say. They're like recovering or trying to come back from a hard shipping experience or something. So I do have some of those on my little desk back here, the little glass table some rooting in water, but I'll get to that in just a minute here. I'll show you what I have at the entranceway here of my workspace. Um, this is a Anthurium crystallinum. Crystallinums are one of my favorite Anthurium. I love them. They're so forgiving. Um, I did try to put this one originally into plastic pot after I had already been growing it out in terracotta and it did not like it at all. It didn't like the change. It wasn't getting enough airflow to the roots and this is what it did. So you can see the crisping and yellowing along the edge. Yeah, that's from putting it into plastic when it was not adapted to plastic. But this new leaf turned out beautiful. That was nice and big and big and beautiful. And it's got a flower spike right now, which I already uh, got some of the pollen off of there. And um, I would, oops, sorry, my camera just went out of focus. But yeah, I got some of the pollen off there. It's in a little baggie in the freezer right now. And I would like to pollinate some of my other anthurium. I, I do have another one over here that's in bloom, but we'll get to that. That's a different zone there in the middle. <laughs> we'll, we'll make our way around that. Oh, and I forgot to mention the plant stand because I always love when people show their decor with their plants that they're using. And I love vintage stuff. So vintage 1970s, especially rattan is one of my favorite things. So that is a rattan 1970s plant stand. And then on this side, I've got my vanilla orchids. So I've got two, the regular green one, which the leaves are getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> They're so cute. I, I mean, they're not like huge or anything, but they're they're definitely growing larger compared to like the little the little ones down here. So it seems to be doing well. It's got some roots that are starting to grab in. And then my variegated vanilla orchid is on this side. That one seems to be doing well also. Okay, so this zone is kind of like the hospital up here on my glass table. So I've got some plants that I'm rooting in water. Like this poor thing came in real rough from Equigenera. And so I'm rerooting that in water. Oh, that's, um, that's a El Chaco red. And it looks like it's doing good. Let's take a look in here. Yep, we've got new pink roots. Oh, there's a new growth point in there too. Yes, excellent. And then I've got some other propagations. I'm doing um, Burl Marks, uh, Philodendron Burl Marks Fantasy. There's another <laughs> Philodendron Burl Marks Fantasy. I didn't like how it was growing, so I decided to chop it up and uh, restart it. This is an Anthurium Kermalens here. Also came in from Equigenera. I'm having to reroute that because it was very upset. All the roots rotted off like immediately after coming in. So I'm having to completely restart that. I've got also, this one came in the same time that this other El Chaco came in. Another Philodendron El Chaco red. Uh, that one had just got potted up though, cause it had rerouted. And so it's just got some old, old leaves that were pretty rough from shipping the original leaves, but it looks like it's working on a new one. So I look forward to seeing that new growth point push out another leaf and uh, other propagations there. I forgot to show you guys down here. I've got two Philodendron Gloriosum, the Zebra Gloriosum over on that side that have the really pronounced white stripes. And then this one came from uh, Indonesia. Um, but this one, it's putting out a brand new leaf. This last leaf got totally damaged by a milkweed bug that um, had its babies in my plant room here. Thank you very much. It took me a while to figure out what on earth they were, but I spotted them on my Gloriosum here, eating the brand new leaf as it was trying to unfurl. So yeah, I had to remove those from the plant room and put them outside. Those were voracious eaters, those little baby milkweed bugs too. <laughs> I, I just think um, it's, it's shocking rather that how those little things could eat so much. Um, but anyway, hopefully the new leaf will come out 
uh, and kind of make up for that. I've got a Calathea jungle velvet here or Gopertia jungle velvet, uh, gorgeous velvety leaves. I really like this plant, but I think because I've got limited space in here, I think I might sell that one. I'm thinking about it. Anyway, it is beautiful though. I love those, I love those leaves. Okay, the Alocasia Michalitziana. It's been a while since I've showed you guys this one. The last time I showed it, I think it was probably a baby. And I think I mentioned that I was struggling with it because I couldn't figure out why the leaves were drooping and facing downwards. It took me a while to figure that out because I thought I didn't know if it had something to do with my watering. If I was underwatering it or overwatering, I couldn't figure out what on earth was going on. So I finally figured that out. I realized that the lighting was too intense for it. So it was just too bright. It didn't like it. And so that's what was making the leaves droop downwards. And so once I moved it into more gentle light, it started perking up. It started getting really happy, putting out bigger leaves, more leaves, and they're all facing upwards and it's looking beautiful now. So the last time you saw it, it probably had like little, little leaves like this. And now it's got much bigger leaves going on, which are absolutely beautiful. This is a most recent leaf it just put out. Actually, that one's still kind of soft. It's still hardening off, but they are beautiful. And these littler leaves down here are actually from a pup that it put out. So it has this little offset right here. And then right next to that, I have my Alocasia zebrina, which was one of my very first uncommon house plants. I absolutely love this because of the petioles. Like, look at those animal print petioles, what? And it's putting out a brand new leaf too, so I can't wait to see that one unfurl. But those petioles are something else, aren't they? I love it. And it's got a, a nice big leaf here. It actually got mad. I had it over on the side of the room originally and it was doing good and then I tried to move it. It didn't like it. It did not like to be moved at all. So it ended up dropping leaves and I had to put it back over here. I'm amazed at watching how these plants grow once they feel comfortable after getting established. They really take off and just explode with growth. Like I can't believe all the leaves on that. Um, it's trying to take over the bench. I actually had my humidifier down here on the bench originally and I had to move that out of the way because that thing was trying to take over. And it's probably gonna try to push this one off the bench pretty soon too. Oh, and down here I have my little homemade fountain and that is still going strong. I made that in one of the plant room updates video if you wanna see how I did it, it's super easy. And then up here on the shelves, I've got some of my babies that I'm just growing out and um, they're mostly anthurium. Oh my gosh, I didn't even see that this morning. Okay, so that is, which one is this? Okay, well, it's a new leaf that's just, <laughs> just coming out there. I get these two mixed up. I had this pot, and then this one. Oh, that one's got a new leaf coming out too. Okay, it's probably ready for some water. By the way, this is disgusting. I know, I'm sorry. I probably should have not put you put that right in your guys' face. <laughs> that is my little gnat catcher there. Here, I'll move this for now. But yeah, I had a problem with gnats because one got away in here and it just like ruined everything. Anyway, here. Let me, let me take this out and I'll be right back. For a long time, I didn't have any gnats at all, which was awesome, but I'd ordered a couple of plants on Etsy and I unboxed them in my front room and opened them up and a gnat flew out of the box and all of a sudden it like restarted the whole gnat process again in here. Okay, I've got a leaf coming out there. So one of these is a carmelence, I think. This is the carmelins here. It's either the Bessier affinis or the carmelins, but they're both anthurium that are coming out here. Now see that one I accidentally um, overwatered. You can see the edges of the leaf. Yeah, it wasn't happy about that. These guys really let you know about that. These are the Bessier affinis anthurium. This one, oh, so both of these I grew from chonks. Well, actually all the plants, all the baby plants you see up here are all grown from chonks. Can I just show you this one right here though? How cute. How, this was even cuter like a day ago, two days ago. It was so tiny and it's it's still super cute. It's like really, really tiny here. Look at, look at the difference between this. Let's just set that right there so you can see them together. Like how, how adorable is that? <laughs> I just love little baby anthurium leaves. They are the cutest little critters. So I'm growing these in moss in these little vented containers. And yeah, there's enough moisture in there. Normally I just like to keep it really airy, but moist, but not wet. Um, Cause they, they don't, they will get mad if they get too much moisture. You know, anthurium roots, I mean, younger ones, they like a little more moisture, but they like you to be pretty consistent with them. Um, this one is another 
uh, queen over here, a little baby queen that I grew from a chunk. So cute, right? It's got a little bit of marking up here. I had it in the propagation, perlite propagation box for a while and it was kind of like touching the side of the container where it was all wet. I just turned my spider firmer light off because I thought it might be a little too bright in here for you guys uh, on the camera anyway. Um, so I've got some propagations up here in water. Um, this is the Raphidophora decursiva. I'm not sure how, if those like to root in water or not. It's totally an experiment. <laughs> it's the first time I'm trying to propagate those, but I'll see how they do. And then uh, Philodendron Burl Marks Fantasies. I don't know if those enjoy rooting in water either, but I'm giving it a shot. Those are kind of newer ones because I just chopped that plant apart. I love these codex plants so much. This is a Sininja leucotrica. leucotrica. Anyway, it's super fuzzy, but I accidentally underwatered it, and so it got a little bit mad. It's a very cute, fuzzy plant. Um, hopefully it comes back all the way. I'm, I'm gonna water it like really um, slowly and try to get it to re-root again in there, because I know I, I underwatered it so much that the roots basically like shriveled up on it, and so I've gotta re-root it. Um, there's the other Bessier that I'm growing. I didn't overwater that one like I did that one, oops. That one is uh, in better condition, but it'll be fine. It'll push out a new leaf. As soon as I start to see uh, roots start to fill out the container, then I'm gonna pot it into um, my chunky anthurium mix. This is a uh, anthurium regale that I grew from a chunk and it looks to be doing good in there. We got roots. There's a little root, how are we doing on the bottom? Yeah, it looks yeah, we got a few. Oh, that one's trying to poke out the, the vent there. Um, vented pots are okay um, for a short time, but I don't like to grow my anthurium in there long term or any plants in there long term because uh, the roots really try to get through those holes. They love oxygen, right? They're always moving towards the oxygen. I forgot about this one up here at the very top shelf. I can't remember the name of this, but it is a jungle, jungle fern, jungle cactus fern. Fern leaf cactus. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. Sometimes I have a, I, I've got like all these different plant names in my head, but sometimes I forget who I've got in here occasionally. But that one is a really cool wild one. I, I do love it. Um, this one I had to move away from. I had it on the other side of the room, but it was kind of near my window and it was getting a little bit of sunlight, kind of filtered sunlight coming through. Even though it was morning sun, it still burned like burn scars into my plant, which I was kind of bummed about. So I had to move it away. Man, that sun is super intense, even if it's like super early morning sun. This is Talansia zeographica, the queen of air plants. I love those. Those are such gorgeous air plants. Um, oh, I've got my crystals up here too. Now, some of the items that I have are from my own personal collection. And then some I have in containers here waiting to photograph. And so I just keep them in here as a reminder until I get them photographed. And then they go back out into their flats, um, which are boxes that I keep everything organized in for the website. So this is all Baltic Amber. There's some really cool, uh, like higher end specimens in the very back there. But then I've got these other pieces in the front that are absolutely gorgeous too. But you know, I really like having a variety, like a full range. So that, so that way there's something for everybody. Libyan Desert Glass is another one of my absolute favorite gemstones. I don't know if you'll be able to see in here through the container, but like cabs, I collect all kinds of Libyan Desert Glass, like from my personal collection. And I will have some going on the website here, probably starting next week. Also over here on the top shelf, I have a couple of extra pots. I don't spend a lot of money on pots, but sometimes I come across really interesting ones that are secondhand. And so I'll pick those up for a couple bucks at uh, estate sales or garage sales. So I've got like some interesting stone ones up there. And as for like other items on my shelf with the plants here, oh, I've got my camel that Michael got me one year at the gym shows. That was a few years ago. It's carved out of stone. It's hand carved in Mexico. I love it. The detail on this is amazing. It's carved out of Jasper. And I have uh, a couple of other stones up here. Like this is Boulder Opal 
from Australia, from Queensland. It is gorgeous. See that blue veining in there? Oh my gosh, I love the ironstone, the natural matrix it's in. And then this is petrified wood, also from Queensland, Australia. I love designing with plants too. So if you guys have watched my channel for a while, I love decor and styling, you know, different areas of the house, different ways. And one of my favorite things to use is crystals, stones, just natural elements with the plants. I think they complement each other really well. So I have have fossils and crystals around the room in here like there's a big uh, fern leaf fossil back here with several fern leaves in there and then also some Herkimer diamond look how cute that is I love when the stone is hiding in the matrix it's natural matrix so cute and then this is shungite shungite uh, elite shungite in the matrix which is super neat to see because you normally don't see that I've got some African citrine here. These uh, tips are broken, but I don't mind. Like I keep, I'll keep the broken crystals. I put all my best crystals on the website though, but I don't mind having some chipped crystals in here. They're still really beautiful to look at and to, to use as decor. Or you could even put them like in a tray or something, you know, if you have several kind of like chipped or broken pieces. Um, this is actually tektites and meteorites in here. And I have a couple of Peruvian Lemurian crystals here, which are super cool. They're so glowy, right? They're like, they really pop. They really grab the light and just radiate it out. I've got Moldavite, which is a tektite. Pika glass from Chile. Um, this is another piece of elite shungite. Columbianite, saffrodite, uh, Darwin glass. So I'm into like space rocks, tektites, meteorites. And uh, oh, this is a meteorite from Australia. And then, oh, there's another piece of citrine. That's a... Uh, Zambian citrine there, double termination. And then, oh, Shangan amethyst from the Chibuku mine. Oh my gosh, like this stuff. This is a new find and it is absolutely stunning. Like every single piece of Shangan amethyst is totally unique and different from each other. It's it's nothing like, uh, like Uruguayan amethyst, uh, like the geodes, you know, the, those can all kind of look very similar. And the color zoning on this is amazing. I mean, like all the pieces are super cool. I love collecting gemstones though. Gemstones, space rocks, tektites. My favorite tektites will always be the Libyan desert glass from Egypt though, from the Great Sand Sea. Oh my gosh. And the darker pieces that you see there, like some, some will have actually elements from the meteorite itself, from the impact. So I have some really cool pieces that are in here right now. I've got to get all that on the website though, so that's going to take a while. I've got to photograph everything individually and get it on there. I also got to photograph tektites too, and my Peruvian crystals and yeah, so much to do, <laughs> so much to do. Uh, photographing takes a really long time when you're photographing each individual piece, but I love it. I, I absolutely love it. It is an absolute joy <laughs> in my life. It's one of my favorite things to be involved in the gemstone world. This is the Raffidophora de Cursiva up here, and I had some trouble with this. Um, I just recently repotted it, and it did put out a long runner, which I finally chopped off, and I'm kind of restarting it. Anyway, I'm gonna see how that one does, and hopefully it will not do the runner thing again. And then on top of my desk, I have this little plant stand that I got at Ikea, and I have some baby propagations growing in here right now. Um, these are all the um, melanochrysums. So I've got two baby melanochrysums that I propagated in a perlite prop box. So there's a little one there. How? Let's see how they're doing. Oh, that one's trying to put out a new leaf. I should spray it. And then that one... That one got mad. I left it in the prop box, I think, for too long, and it started to get upset because I think it was touching too much moisture or moisture was getting on it. And at least I think that's what's going on. <laughs> you never know with melanochrysums. <laughs> I, I struggle with these things so much, you guys. It's ridiculous. Um, oh, it looks like this leaf got out okay, except there's a little bit of damage right there on the, on the petiole but at least it got out. It's probably gonna have like a big dent in the leaf though <laughs> where it was kind of stuck. Oh my gosh. Anyway, this whole thing, like every single leaf struggles every time I'm trying with them though. But these little babies I grew from wet sticks. So that it's just fun to play, you know, even if I can't even grow them very well, it's still fun to play and try. <laughs> I like to use this sprayer too because it actually puts out a, a bit of breeze <laughs> when I'm spraying it. I feel like it really 
add some some wind <laughs> it adds some breeze to help push out and loosen up the leaves when they're stuck like that anyway i just give give the new leaf a good squirt there is that one doing anything i mean i think it's trying to do something i'm not sure what the hell <laughs> And since the last time you guys saw my plant room, I did switch this wall up. I just switched my desk, which was here, and I moved that under the window, and I moved the plants that were under the window on this little table. I just moved those here. So I just did an even trade here just to protect these new plants that were getting taller from the heat from the window because that window gets pretty hot uh, during summertime. So being that it's springtime right now and summer is on the way and the hotter weather, I had to change my plant room around to protect the plants from the heat and light intensity. I have a couple of variegated plants. Even though I'm not super big into variegation, I do love the Monstera albo. Like that's my number one favorite variegated plant. Um, but I don't go out of my way to like collect variegated plants at all. I'm, I'm generally more into the deep, rich, velvety, dark green leaves. But yeah, when it comes to variegation, like this is my number one plant. Like I'm happy with just that one variegated plant. I do have another um, little variegated plant down here, the Syngonium albo. It's a pretty cute plant, but it doesn't do it for me the same way that this one does. Like I would be happy with just that one variegated plant. Um, I might sell this one in the future. I think I'm gonna grow it up. I'll grow it up to the top of this pole and then I'll sell it. I think that's what I'm gonna do with that one. I've got a Monstera subpanata, and one thing I've learned about that is it's very sensitive to too much air circulation, uh, too much heat, um, light intensity if it's too intense. It really likes just more gentle, more gentle everything. Oh, sorry, pardon me. Um, this is a, uh, I don't, well, I'm not sure what this is. I thought it was an Adansonii when I got it, but I don't know, the, the holes are quite large for it, for a regular Adansonii. So I don't know if you guys know what that might be, unless it's just a really holy Adansonii, I'm not sure. I actually bought this as a cutting for $5 at Green Things. And so it's finally starting to grow. Oh, it's got a brand new leaf here. Can't wait to see each one. Um, I gotta make sure I keep it watered though. They really love a lot of water. Ooh. Yeah, it's, it's got moisture in there, but it really likes nice, consistent watering. I got a Syngonium. This is my second Syngonium, so I only have two, but I love this one. This is the Frosted Heart Syngonium. Just opened up a brand new leaf there. So this one actually grows pretty well, but I realized that it did slow down growth when I got too close to the grow light. It was sitting up on my desk before, and it really kind of started, um, the leaves started getting kind of bleached out. But once you take it away from the, in the light that's too intense, it starts getting really really cool pattern back in the leaves. This Amedrium Silver, I got that from Aeroid Market and it is gorgeous. Oh man, I love this one. I love the shape of the leaves and I'm just making sure that I got it. I just recently moved it, so I'm hoping that it'll still be happy with the lighting. Um, if it's too intense, then I will pull it a further away from the light. But so far, you, you know, because I want to make sure that it's, it keeps that beautiful silvery blue sheen to it. But um, this is the newest leaf that is just just starting to harden off now. So they are a beautiful plant though. I love those. And in the back on this plant stand is one of my all time favorite philodendrons. This is the philodendron patriciae uh, or patriciae, however you want to say it. It is gorgeous. It's unfurling a brand new leaf right now. It is so much fun to watch these big leaves unfurl. I love that long pendant style leaf. I love how they're pleated and with each one that it puts out, they get more pleated and bigger and longer. They're just such gorgeous plants. I mean, look at that. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to see this newest leaf finish unfurling and filling out. But yeah, I've been watching that. They take their sweet time unfurling a new leaf, but it is so worth the wait. That is a plant that I just look forward to each and every new leaf. It's just such a cool one. And then for lighting at the very top, I have two of those Amazon lights, and then I have the Spider Farmer 2000 grow light there. This one was quite a special plant here because it came from Equigenera and it was one that almost died because it, it just came with all rotted roots and there was only a few roots to begin with, but they were not in good shape at all. And I had a really hard time rerooting it for the longest time until I realized that the nodes I was trying to reroot in water had already been spent and there was just nowhere else for it to root. And so I was left with one tiny node left at the very top, like the very newest, freshest node. 
And so once I got that in water, all of a sudden it immediately started rooting up. So I was really grateful for that. So this is just an extra special baby plant that has come back from literally almost the brink of death. <laughs> like all I had was this one little leaf here. That's one of the um, almost original leaves. Like it was still furled up when it came in and it was finally able to unfurl and basically um, saved itself with um, with a little bit of help from me <laughs> just getting getting the right node into the water is all i did the plant did all the work um, but i love this one because it's hairy it's got the petiole i heard that the philodendron fibrosum is one of the most hairiest petioles if you guys know of a hairier one i might need to have that but otherwise i do love the, the little green hairs on this one i mean look down here it'll take a while for them to get more hairy as they start to mature more but you can see the the hairs on the original leaf like look at that like heck yes i love it i love the green hair so yeah as that puts out new leaves hopefully it will get that hairy again it's got a brand new caterpillar coming in right there can't wait to see that one that's another one that uh, seems to be a little bit heat sensitive it likes warm but not hot weather and it doesn't want to be too close to any grow lights because it seems to be very sensitive and it will um, curve its petiole downwards. It will droop the leaves to avoid the light, int the intense light. Um, but right now you can see it's very perky. It's still pretty upright. And as long as you see everything kind of tilted up like that, it looks like it should be in uh, a pretty happy situation. But if you see those, uh, those petioles start to bend downwards away from the light, then you know it's probably too hot or too intense for it. I've got some philodendron splendids. I've got two of those. This one here, which is beautiful. Those leaves on there. Oh man, that's one of my favorite philodendrons. It's such a joy to grow. I just put out a brand new leaf back here. And then this is the other one I have up here. That one's getting a little bit tall. It's a little too close to that light. I might have to move it down on the floor. And then I've got two of the Philodendron Glorious, one here. I just put out a brand new leaf here. Beautiful, still really soft and hardening off. It's got the nice, pretty peachy back. And then this one up here is another Glorious and that one is putting out a brand new leaf too. There's my two other Milano Chrysum back here. This one was one that I chopped and propped. And then I've got that one I'm ear layering. That one just put out a new leaf there. Barely, it barely made it. <laughs> it's putting out another leaf there. Um, oh, you know what? Shoot, let me turn off my grow light here because it's probably pretty, pretty intense. There we go, that's a little bit better. Okay, so we've pretty much covered all the ones on the floor and in the center here up on that little table. Oh, in the middle here on that little shelf, I just have some extra pots. And then over here, I've got some little babies. Um, I've got some that I propagated from my mother plant, my plow manii. I actually ended up selling the plow manii, uh, the, the big one. And then I've got some baby Monstera siltipicanos there. And then let's see, oh, the um, Doriaki, Anthurium Doriaki is hiding in there, one of the little ones. So cute, I love those Doriaki. <laughs> those are some of my favorite. Their, their leaves are so so like rounded and plump and cute. I just love them. This is a Vitara folium here. I moved it to this space because I actually had it under uh, brighter light and it was too much light for it. So I had to move it over here under one of these Amazon lights because they're just much more gentle for these. So hopefully it likes this spot better. And this is the brand new leaf that it's putting out here. And then on the top shelf, I have two Anthurium Polytiflorum on the side. And then the little one in the center is Anthurium Vitarifolium, just a little baby. And I actually messed up on that one. I watered it a little too much where the water, normally I try not to water my Anthurium where the water is like flowing through the bottom of the pot, but I was a little bit heavy handed on this little baby and I think I messed up that leaf because there's a big water patch here, but now it's kind of discolored. So, oops, um, it is putting out a new leaf up there though. So I got to remember to just be a little bit lighter on the watering. They like frequent watering anthurium, but they just don't want a lot of water. Like the volume of water has to be a little bit less, but 
frequent. That's kind of what they seem to like. At least that's been my experience um, with my setup and my, my soil and everything. Politiforum are gorgeous too. Like they have that velvety sheen, like satiny sheen. I love those so much. That leaf has gotten big too. They're putting out, they're both putting out brand new leaves too. I see the, the little caterpillar new leaf poking out on both of them. I can't wait to see how, how those leaves are coming along. And then here's what this Fitzjo shelf looks like. So at the very top shelf, I have a rehab that came in from Equigenera. This I bought as a seedling. It's a philodendron esmeralda dense seedling. And that one had a really rough time when it first came in. It had all root rot and some rot on the stem. So I had to bring that one back and it looks like it will be doing fine though. It's just taken a, a long time to kind of get reestablished but it looks like it's doing okay, except I can tell right now that it is thirsty. The leaves are looking a little bit dull, so I better take that one into the kitchen and give it some more water before we continue on with the tour. I've got uh, two anthurium here. This one has been uh, going through a rough time to settling in, but it finally is getting better now. It's got a new caterpillar here, and I peeked in here the other day, and the roots are finally starting to grow out. I had to reroot it because when it came in, it was in like really wet soil or um, wet moss and I should have taken it out straight away and I didn't. Um, and it, it, it had rot on the root. It had one root <laughs> when it came in from Equigenera. Um, oh, the, I didn't tell you what this was. This is Anthurium Cyrenoi Velvet. This one is a little Anthurium Doriaki. So cute once again. And they're so reactive to the lighting that you put in. Like this one has more silver in it because it was in a little bit brighter light. So a little bit less green, more silver. This is the Crystallinum Silver. These are the older leaves. This is what it came in with. Um, that's the first leaf it put out in my care since I got it. It took it a while to kind of get established and uh, it seems to be doing good, but yeah, it's got a different kind of look and texture. It's very silvery though. Like those veins are so crystalline. They're gorgeous, they're so sparkly. I've got a little philodendron uh, splendid back here. That little dark one. Oh, this is a piece that you're actually going to see in the gym show video that's going to be coming. I'm editing that one right now, but you're, you guys are going to see this video first. Um, but this is a uh, pink amethyst from Argentina. I love it. Oh, it just makes me so happy to look at crystals. This alocasia down here, I forgot I had this one also. So actually I have five alocasia, but this one is the dragon scale. And this is not one that I would normally have picked out for myself, but it's been so easy. It's just been a joy to grow. Like it's such, it really is such a cool pattern. It's very, um, very like, I don't know, alien kind of looking. It just finished blooming and it's got another leaf coming through there. So I can't wait to see how big that one is. This is the last leaf, the most recent one that it put out. And that one came out pretty big. I wasn't expecting that, but it seems to also be one of those plants that really likes the more medium light rather than bright light. So that's pretty much my velvet leaf philodendron zone with a few others sprinkled in there, my monsteras, and also a few anthuriums sprinkled in there and the pendant anthuriums but that's what that side of the room looks like. And then I'll show you guys over on this side of the room where my desk is. So let's come over here. So this is where I get ready every morning. I've got my makeup in that drawer and my makeup brushes and everything. So it's kind of like my, just my little space where I get ready after I get dressed in the morning, I come in here and do my makeup. And I've got my, um, my variegated string of hearts. I almost forgot what those were called. Variegated string of hearts. I've got three pots of those, um, the longer one on the top shelf. And I've got my, uh, one of the bars of the Amazon lights is directly over the top of that because you've got to have light coming from overhead on those. Otherwise they'll go bald, but they'll also go bald if you're not giving them enough water. Like, so I've got, if I come in closer, you'll be able to see where I, where I messed it up. I lost some leaves at the very top here because I just, I was letting it go a little too dry. These are actually much thirstier, especially as they get longer, they require more water. And I was just not giving it enough water. So it did lose some of those nice, big, fat, chunky leaves. It's got some, some of the vines still have, like that's a nice, huge leaf there. For, for a string of hearts. Um, but yeah, I lost some of those leaves. Um, you can always restart them or whatever. I mean, the nodes are still good. This one is a pot that I consolidated. I had a few pots of propagations 
And so I had just taken some cuttings and restarted those. And I had them in a bunch of little pots, like I mentioned, and I just needed to get those all consolidated together into one pot so they could hold on to their moisture a little bit better. And I see some new little growth in there in the top since I repotted this, so that's good. I've got another pot back here. This one also balding. <laughs> this was the very first strand that I got. Um, and it's I've had to wrap it around several times, but I'm saving that because um, I'm going to propagate more on there too. I'm going to chop that whole thing up and start a brand new pot of it. I've got this Anthurium crystallinum here. I love Anthurium crystallinum. They're one of my favorite plants. I probably mentioned that already, but it's finally putting out new leaves, new growth. It has some old growth here, old, older leaves that um, from when it was dehydrated. So that's what that is. That's from not getting enough water. So the tips will dry out like that. Um, but if you're overwatering, you'll get more around the edges, like more around the perimeter, not just the tips, but underwatering is the tips. Yeah, this one's finally putting out new leaves though that are beautiful, so that's good. On the bottom shelf, I just have some of my white pots, and then this is the Brandyanum, Philodendron Brandyanum. That one I had to relocate. It was trying to get on my fan in the center of the room and I had to move it over here because it outgrew its pole. I actually repotted it into a plastic pot now. It was in terracotta and I think it'll like this better because it holds on to more moisture for it. Um, this plant loves water. It loves humidity around its roots all the time. It does not want to go dry. It starts getting really um, crinkly and the leaves really struggle if it starts going too dry too often. That one is doing pretty well since I got it repositioned and now it's able to keep on climbing up because before it was it kind of like was flopping around <laughs> and it didn't have anything to climb on once it outgrew the top of that. So I think we got it situated a little bit better. This was a piece when I recently repotted it, it broke off. So I've got it in a jar of water propagating that. So hopefully that will put out some new roots soon. And I've got some other xerographic or not, no, not xerographica, but these are Tillandsia tectorum air plants, but they are xeric air plants. So they are the desert kind. Is it time to water you? It's probably time to water you, but look, can I just show you the size of this thing? <laughs> this is the hairiest Tillandsia air plant you will ever find too. It's from Ecuador. Look at the hairs on that. They're trichomes that help it collect moisture and nutrients, but they are just beautiful plants. I love those so much. They're so fuzzy and delightful. I've got my brass camel in the back because I, I don't know, I'm into camels. So I kind of <laughs> collect camel stuff. Uh, anytime I come across some sort of interesting camel thing. And then I've got my quartz crystals in the front here. Those are both from Madagascar. They're like so water clear. They're beautiful. And then the little tiny plants that I have, I love African plants and African plants are so cool, aren't they? So I've got Euphorbia obesa. Those are some of my favorites. They're just so crazy, aren't they? Like these little, little plant balls. <laughs> they're just so cute. And this one's blooming right now. And they're male or female. So I think this one is a male here in the center. So it's like the little balls of pollen, whereas the female will just be the, the open stigmas. And then I have the Symmetrica, which are similar, but they're a lower profile. They stay a little more round. Whereas the Obisa, like this is another Obisa here. You can see it gets a little more elongated. I tried to close my blinds so it's not so backlit, but it might be hard to see though. So that's another Euphorbia Obisa there. And then these are the Euphorbia Symmetrica. This is a Pseudolithos. Look at that crazy thing. Like how, how bizarre is that? Look at it, it's all like bumpy and warty and Green, green, gray skin with warts. These ones are growing pretty fast. I better get those potted up. So I've got that little pot there waiting. I'm gonna do a little uh, Euphorbia Symmetrica garden with those. There's another Pseudolithos, because Michael and I both bought one. So actually this, this greener one, they'll get more green with less light. And then if they get a little more light, they will get a little more brown. So it looks like that one's getting a little more light and some might be just prone to being a little more green. Mine's a little bit on the green side, but still with warts. Look at it, very unusual, huh? That's from Somalia. And then I've got the little green Malachite lithops. So cute, they're all clustered together there. And then I've got another, um, the Salicola lithops. That one is just putting out uh, its new body. So it's, 
this is the new body in the center and it's soaking up, it's reabsorbing all the moisture and nutrients from its old body. So that's what that side of the room looks like. And just to my left here is the closet where I keep all my plant supplies. So I can show you guys in there too if you want real quick. Um, the desk I bought secondhand, actually both the desk and the chair I bought secondhand on Craigslist. I think the desk was like 30 bucks and the chair was $10. And I've got Michael in here right now too, because he just I'm, got home. I'm here. You want to share any thoughts on uh, plant like plant these, babies? These you things. like those, yeah? Because they remind me of a Zulu sheep. <laughs> those yeah, are they're, and they're then big. These over here that the, that uh, looks fake. I do like the boat, and this reminds me of a tarot leaf, kind of. Yeah, it kind of does. What about the the baby? The baby <laughs> queens aren't those cute? Uh, <laughs> I'm really jealous of this. Is the thing I'm jealous of. I wish I'd seen it first. Oh, he likes the, the one I find unusual vases. Yeah, that one. I haven't showed you guys this shelf uh, much yet, but we'll definitely get to that. I've got some propagations in that vase. I like the elbow. I like the 50-50 uh, leaf. That's pretty cool. That's yeah, pretty cool. they call those half moons. That's almost a half moon. Look at that, though. It's put out all kinds of new leaves. I love crystallinum. It's got a new little baby leaf coming in on this side. It's turning into a little bush. What's going on here? What is this? Oh, that's a flower spike. So that's a flower. Actually, I... That's what the flower looks like on that one? Yeah, well, they're a bunch of tiny flowers, actually. <laughs> well, what that pollinates that? Like little moths or something? Oh, you know what? I can't remember what pollinates in yes, I'll have to look that up. Perpendicular almost to the zone. <laughs> I know. So this is a flower on this one too? Same thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, that's an old one. I just, uh, sometimes I just leave them on there to kind of like get reabsorbed by the plant. I, uh, if it wants the moisture or whatever in the petiole. I, I, I do that a lot. Like I will just leave, like if there's damaged leaves, if they have green on them still, I'll just leave them. Like look at that. Like. That's an original leaf that this plant came with. Oh, this is another favorite here. Oh man, Michael, wait until you see this one get bigger. Cause yeah. this is like one of your queens over there. It's so it's a hybrid uh, of a queen mixed with a water berry on them. This one here. So it's a super velvety. This is all chewed up too, because well, I'll explain about that later. Uh, that was me. That was me. Um, it got sunburned. I left it in the wrong place in the room with the, the blinds open. Uh, but yeah, this one's gonna be awesome. That's one of my favorites. Oof. Yeah, cute. That's like two feet. Oh, and normally I do have the fan going too. I have a ceiling fan in here, so there will be more air circulation. I turned it off while I'm filming though, so it wouldn't be too loud. So I've got my wild anthurium collection, or most of it anyway, on these tables in the center of my room, and they're directly below the ceiling fan, so they get really good air circulation, but they're also um, in an area where they're kind of protected from light. Um, I didn't want them directly under grow lights because they're, they do like more medium light, most of these plants. Um, some of them prefer even lower, like low to medium light. So they definitely don't like bright light. So here's a couple plants that I made the mistake of putting in too bright of light. The Anga Marcanum, actually both of these are finally getting their color back, the nice deep green, but they got really bleached out when I first got them. I was trying to grow them on this top shelf up here. And so it's about two and a half, three feet away they were from the grow light and it was too bright. That's a really powerful grow light up there. That's Spider Farmer 600. And they got super uh, burned and bleached. Oh my gosh, this poor thing. I feel so bad that I left it up there for so long and didn't realize that that was going on. So it, most of the leaves are damaged from that, but it's it's starting to come back. So it'll be fine. It's got, it's got look at that. It's got two new leaves coming in, so it'll be okay. And then the water berry on them that looks all chewed up. It does look like, it looks like it got chewed on, didn't it? <laughs> but it actually got sunburned too, because after I moved them off the top shelf, I had them on the other side here. I thought it was gonna be okay. And then one day I forgot and left the blinds turned the wrong direction and the sun came in in the afternoon, totally destroyed the poor thing. 
Like, look at that sunburn. Isn't that crazy? I swear, sunburns can look really crazy on plants, but don't be afraid. It's not a fungal infection or a bacteria infection. Even, even though you see like these little kind of rounded shaped spots with a yellow outline or something, cosmetic damage will look like that too. And the way that plants burn, sometimes it will burn where the water is held most in the leaves. So when you're looking at this, see how it's mostly down towards the, the big main central vein there. A lot of water flows right along there and you can see that that water was just scorched right through the leaf. It'll be okay though, it'll make it. One of my favorite Anthurium hybrids, this is the one I was talking about when Michael was in here, it's the Anthurium waraquianum with Waterberryanum hybrid. So that one, I mean, I didn't know what it is about that, but I love, I love everything about that leaf the veining and everything. Here's the old leaf that it originally came with. And that one is pretty, pretty chewed up and crunchy now, but I leave the plants or I leave their leaves on there as long as possible. Um, and I let the plant, you know, reabsorb any, anything it wants from that leaf and petiole. Uh, and I, I try not to cut off leaves, like, unless they're like really, <laughs> really bad, but that still has green on it. So it, you know, it's still working for the plant. Here's an Anthurium regale, gorgeous patterning. I love the genetics of this plant. The roots, like when it first came in, it just lost all of its roots. And so I had to reroot it. Well, I got fuzzy roots coming through the hole. So I know it's growing roots, but it seems to be just very busy, just growing roots and doing nothing else. That's the original leaf, oops. And then that one, it put out and immediately got spider mites as soon as it popped it out when it was really little. And so it's been trashed <laughs> like immediately. It just did not have a good start to life, but um, I'm gonna keep taking care of it and hopefully something will happen good <laughs> with it. So this is Magnificum Verde. It's very pretty, nice deep green. The veins are, you know, different compared to the regular Magnificum. I didn't actually order this, but I got it from Equigenera. I ordered a Magnificum, just a regular one, and they, I guess, accidentally sent me the Magnificum Verde. So um, I, I don't know how to feel about it. It's still a pretty plant, but I, I really wanted the Magnificum, the regular one, just the classic one. Look at that perfect heart shape, the Anthurium clarinervium. If there was one Anthurium that you could have that would be the easiest care, I would say go for one of these. If like you're getting your very first anthurium, it's a pretty forgiving plant. I've got a little one over on this side too. There's the other one. So cute with those little leaves. Oh my gosh, I love them. And then this is a forgetting eye white stripes, which is in bloom right now. It's got two blooms on it, bloom spikes. And that one seems to be doing well. Um, it did get spider mites on the brand new leaf, so I had to treat it, but you can see the damage on it, which was kind of a bummer. It was a nice big leaf. Darn those spider mites. Here's another little Doriaki. That one is doing pretty good. It's putting out new leaves. Yeah, that's the, the newest leaf there. And then that was the other new leaf there. But yeah, they seem to be doing well. I accidentally overwatered it there. So you can see that little damage higher up there. This is an Anthurium papilloluminum hybrid and hopefully it is getting settled into the pot. It had kind of a rough start. Um, it came in when it was really, really cold. So it just seemed to take quite a while to finally recover. So I think it's just been working on roots in there. I can't wait to see if that will pop out a new leaf for me pretty soon here. Here's a Magnificum Silver, which seems to be doing well. Um, I did accidentally overwater it here. You can see that damage right there. That's from overwatering there on the side, both sides. And right there, you can see a little bit right there. Anthurium Regale, that leaf is massive. I can't believe it has kept that leaf. Um, it only came with that one leaf and I had to reroot this plant because the roots just did not come in great. They immediately just like were just mush when they came in. So I had to cut everything off, completely reroot it, but I was able to save its chunk. And so I've got that propagating too. So I'm going to have new baby, uh, regales also. And this one is putting out roots still. I'm going to give it a little bit more water and being very careful with how much water I give it. Cause I, I think that they tend to really get the water spots super easy. And then, oh, I'll show you guys the shelf over here, this Fitzgerald shelf. So I've got my black velvet situated down here. They're getting medium light, which they seem to be really happy with and they're blooming right now. So I've got a bloom back there and this one is blooming too. 
So this is actually a community pot. So I put like three little, I think like three or four little allocation in here together and they're doing really well. They seem to really like it in here together. And I take care of it like I do my anthurium. So frequent watering, but not too much water each time. So um, otherwise they can get like the edema. I notice pretty easily if they get too much water. This leaf is massive. I'm, I'm not used to getting such big leaves, but it seems to be very happy all growing together in a little community pot like this. But the quilting on this, the, it's like it's embossed. It's amazing. Every time I look, every time I look at these black velvets, I'm just, oh, here, let me turn down the lighting on my camera because it's probably hard to see the actual color. They're much black. Yeah, that's a little bit closer. Anyway, so these are pretty fun. I really enjoy these. I like these black velvet alocasia because they remind me of anthurium, I guess. I love that really thick, hearty, velvety leaf. They're just stunning plants. So I've got my spider firmer 600 light directly above that shelf. It's about three feet away from the plants on the, on the top shelf there, but it's still a pretty powerful light. Um, both of the spider farmer lights that I have in here, the 600 and the 2000, those are pretty strong. The 2000, at least you can dim those. So I have mine on the lowest setting, but the 600 doesn't have a dimmer. So it just stays bright all the time. And down here on the bottom shelf, I have one of my vines, um, my vining codiciform plants. It's the Dioscoria elephantippes on the very bottom. And also on the bottom shelf, I guess I should mention, I do have some of my squeeze bottles, spray bottles, watering can, and I always have a roll of paper towels in here because when I water in here, I tend to, you know, splash a little water here and there. And I always have those handy to, to wipe up any spills right away. Um, but I have this, this vining codiciform plant, the elephantippes going up the left side of my shelf here and it got too bright so you can see where it just stopped growing it didn't want to go any higher towards the light so i'm i might reposition that so the dioscoria elephantippes has a dormancy period during the hottest part of summer and this vine is actually temporary so it will kill off its vine once it approaches dormancy so when the heat of summer comes on that vine will start to dry up and then you'll just have the codex and then once it starts to cool off again and growing season starts to kick in, it'll put out a brand new vine. So that's why you see these little, um, these little sticks here. Those are from the old vines. You could cut those right back to the codex too. I just, I haven't done that yet. So normally I just snip them off when they start to dry up each season. And they're very good climbers. So they will get up and grab onto anything they can and start twirling around it and wrapping themselves around. But you can see this one went as high as it could until it got uncomfortable right here where you can see it was like, nope, I'm not going any closer to that light. I don't know what I'm climbing towards, but that is a no. So you can see it got a little bit sunburn. Uh, it's okay. It does have other vines that it has put out like side shoot vines here. So it's looking for some other direction to go right now. So, and it does have the tip of the vine here that's still, still alive and looking for a place to go. So I'm gonna unwrap that there and send it a different direction. So it grows these little thin heart-shaped leaves. They're really cute and kind of roughly around the edges. But what's really cool and special about this plant is its codex. It turns into like this massive tortoise shell looking textured codex. It's just really, really interesting. So it gets very barky and the bark splits as it grows. Mine is still a pretty young one. I've got an Anthurium serenoi velvet that I'm rerooting back there because it came in with bad roots from Equigenera. So I'm gonna have to hopefully root that out again and get that into a better better situation. So that's a rehab project back there. I've got two baby fibrosums that I propagated off of that main mother plant. And I propagated these in a perlite prop box. And then this is the other one back here. Look how that top petiole has grown right up with its little skewer though. I'm using little barbecue skewers in there because <laughs> they, they were such tiny little babies when I potted them up but I still wanted to have something for them to kind of uh, grow up on because I know that these fibrosomes can be a little bit squirrely. Like they, if they don't have anything to climb on, they could be a little, a little wild. I've got a couple of baby crystallinum doriaki hybrids here. Those are pretty cute. Uh, they're still in their original pots. That's gonna be a separate video when I pot those up though. It's, it's gonna be a separate video on anthurium babies and repotting them. Oh, that one's putting out a new leaf leaf in the center. This is a baby anthurium carmelense that I grew from a chonk. 
I have some Anthurium magnificum seedlings all growing together. They're just growing in moss right now. So I've got to separate those. So I was going to do a video and on all the baby Anthuriums that I have and separate them out, repot them. This is a really neat Anthurium seedling back here. It's the Anthurium Cyrenoi affinis Hawaii. And I got that from uh, Carnivero online and I'm really excited watching that one grow. It's put out a couple leaves since I got it. This is Australian Zebra Rock from um, the Kimberley in Australia. Absolutely gorgeous. Sorry for the dead leaf tip hiding that one. <laughs> but this Zebra Rock is amazing. All the different patterns you can get from it. It's, it's so Australia. You know, it's just absolutely gorgeous, so unique. But it's a uh, it's sedimentary stone, ancient sedimentary stone, and zebra rock is kind of considered to be a pseudo fossil. It's actually been dated to be over 600 million years old. Isn't that crazy? Just unbelievable. The treasures of this earth. This is the philodendron heterocraspidon. And I was really bummed about that because it, the, when it came in, it had more leaves and it was bigger and all the, the nodes were spent, like all the roots were rotted, those lower nodes were spent and the only node that I had left was the, the youngest node at the very tip. And so I was barely able to save this. Like this one was furled up, it was all damaged from the cold or whatever from shipping. I've got, I gotta add a little more water in here, but at least, it's got a little bit of some nubs happening there. It's a little bit of a bummer, even though I know that's what I got to expect sometimes. But man, sometimes you just have uh, hopes and expectations and sometimes those expectations get crushed. <laughs> oh man. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more water actually. So I have these little squeeze bottles and that's normally how I will top that off just a little bit. Oh, and the reason that I ordered this philodendron heterocraspidon was because it's kind of similar to the philodendron patriciae. And I love that one so much that I thought, oh, let me, let me try growing this one and see what this one's like. At least since I've got it in water, it has put out this new catafil, so it has been working on that. So I'm grateful. It's gonna be okay. It's just gonna be a long road to recovery, that's all. Uh, and then up here on the top shelf, that's what that looks like. I've got a few Anthurium up here. Um, this one is a new one to me, the Pendulifolium. That one also came from Equichnera. Just put out a brand new leaf back here. So I'm really interested to see. It's supposed to be like another big pendant and I can't wait to see that one grow. So it'll be really interesting. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it up here though because like I said, the light's pretty strong. So I might end up moving that to a more medium light if it needs it. This is a baby Pelitiflorum, which has been doing pretty well. Oh, it's got a new, got a new leaf there. Can't wait to watch that one. And then this one is Anthurium pendens. At least that's what it was sold as on Equiflora's website. So I don't know that it's like the original pendens. I think there's like a few different plants that are called pendens though. So um, that's one of them though. So I don't know if that's considered a pendens type or if it's a hybrid of some kind, but it was sold as pendens. I just realized that you guys are probably gonna hear me calling like everything my favorite as I'm going through my collection. The reason for that is I've actually spent a lot of time I'm curating a collection of my favorites like on purpose. So any plants that aren't my favorite and I realize that along the way as I'm growing them, I normally clear them out pretty quickly. So that's why like as I'm moving through the collection, I keep saying, oh, this is my favorite. That's my favorite. And I'm going to show you a couple more favorites up here. These are Haworthia. They are some of my absolute favorite succulents. So these are Haworthia cooperi truncata. And it's just one of the many varieties of gorgeous Haworthia species out there. And one of the really interesting characteristics of Haworthia is that they have windows on their leaves. So this is a translucent portion of the leaf, a translucent surface, which allows more light to come into the leaf. And so since they have kind of more rounded leaves, they don't have that big flat leaf surface how a lot of other plants do. So they have to figure out a way to maximize light coming in for their photosynthesis. And that's how they do it, by having translucent windows on the tips of their leaves or on the surface of their leaves. If I pick this one up, maybe, let's see if I hold this in front of the light, if you'll be able to see through those windows. If I hold this over here, maybe you'll be able to see that glow. Ooh, those translucent leaves, gorgeous. And these are another one of those beautiful African gems. 
I just love African plants. They have some of the most gorgeous plants in the world. And that's why they're known as the jewels of the succulent world. They are stunning. Just looking at these kind of makes me want to go shopping for Haworthias. I mean, I don't know if I'll buy any, but if you guys want to go shopping with me and go look at a bunch of different varieties of them, I know a pretty awesome greenhouse and we can go there sometime if you want in a video. And we'll go do a whole tour of a bunch of different varieties of these guys. And then the closet in this room is where I keep all my plant supplies. Oh, you know what I just realized? I forgot to show you guys this other philodendron micans here. This one was kind of a, a rehab, but it's, it's quite long. I actually potted a longer vine that was just a smaller plant. I potted it together with a couple of other small plants, like little four inches into this larger pot. And so it's kind of got a mix of some of the, the nicer dark green velvet mix with this one that is rehabbing. It just got too much light, so it's like super light and bronzed. But um, it looks like it's really viney, right? Like there's a whole bunch of vines. It kind of looks like without leaves, but actually <laughs> those are just like super long roots. If I can separate this root out here, <laughs> it looks like it's just a leafless vine, but they're not. They're actually just aerial roots. Here, let me try to separate these out. Like, look at look at those crazy roots, those aerial roots. And I showed you guys this philodendron micans also, right? That's just a big pot of it, and that one is going to start trailing too. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep that there, though. I might have to put it overhead if it wants to trail down more. And let me show you what's in the plant room closet here. I basically just have all of my substrates in here. Oh, and I have my filming lights also stored in here and a few extra pots. So I've got some terracotta and a few um, coconut husk totems that I have made already. And then I have like my plant tools, like brushes for pollinating. I have like felt because I use those on the bottom of plant saucers and gloves and uh, brushes and all of these containers on this side, I have my substrates and soil mixes in here. So I've got perlite, pumice, horticultural charcoal, bark. Um, I think I have some fern leaf fiber in here, all my coconut husk fiber, uh, the chips and fiber, and then the cocoa peat, uh, worm castings also. But I think that's all in the containers. And then uh, fertilizers I have in this bigger container. So just some different supplies in there for the plants that I use regularly. I've got some stuff there that I need to go wash out to a few pots and some pumice in my little strainer there. Oh, and I've got the cocoa chips over there that come in the big bags that are all compressed. I mean, it could be organized better in here but it's uh, it works it works for now oh and the humidifier i'm using is the elec homes this model here it's their largest capacity one i really like this a lot it's top fill hold on here let me see what i have this okay so i have it set on 55 percent so i just wanted to check that that's normally what i have it set on is 50 or 55 percent so i just wanted to mention that that i'm not actually running the humidifier up to 70 percent i have it set much lower and so it'll kick on if it drops below 55% in here. But I normally don't have to run the humidifier too much. It actually stays pretty humid in here on its own just from the residual humidity when I water all the plants. And I think I mentioned these already down here when Michael was in here, but these are the philodendron El Chaco Reds. I have three of them here. And then the other two that I'm rehabbing up in the, the little rehab hospital area on my shelf back there. Yeah, these are another favorite. I, I love these El Chaco Reds so much. They're gorgeous. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for my plants. And oh, I didn't talk about like where I get most of my plants. I think I mentioned it when, about the queens, like where I got some of those. Most of my plants are imports. But yeah, that's pretty much how I built my collection was just waiting for sales and you know, usually importing, but I've had to do a lot of rehab because of that. But that's okay because, I mean, it does teach you a lot like as you're rehabbing plants and trying to figure them out and growing them from wet sticks and chunks and all that. But um, yeah, that, I guess that's how I've been able to kind of build my collection on a budget because I don't like to spend a lot of money on plants. Uh, I try to, I try, I like to save. I prefer to save my money. And if I'm going to spend it on something, I will buy my gemstones or crystals or camera gear, pretty much. Um, like I need to save up for a lens. I would like to get a macro lens. So that's what I'm saving up for right now. So I am absolutely not buying any plants right now because I'm saving up for that lens. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to share my collection with you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I know it was a super long one. I love you. Stay safe. And I will see you in the next video coming up right after this one. Love you guys. Bye.